thank you for having me here and thank you again for the ministry na meron kayo super nakaka-encourage and thank you Omar for inviting me here. So mag-share lang ako ng a little bit of my testimony and hopefully um, later mas marami tayong time for Q&A and I'm sure sobrang mas maraming questions doon tayo magtatagal. So anyway, again, I am Carla Peña. I'm an interior designer and videographer. And I am the youngest and only girl among three siblings. And early on, nung bata-bata pa ako, I never really knew what it was like to act girly, especially while even possessing a naturally deep voice. So talagang mababa boses ko if nagtataka kayo, if nag, ano ba ako, nag-pills para magkaroon ng mas mababang boses, hindi. <laughs> Natural malalim yung boses ko. And nung bata ako, my parents were always out and I didn't have any girls to play with. So I was left to spend a lot of time with my brothers who became my role models. So I ended up wanted, wanting everything that they wanted from ano, ano ba, to, uh, superheroes, toy cars, basketball, and even to wearing their clothes. And uh, um, yun yung childhood ko. So when I started to go to school na, I remember always being teased by the boys as a tomboy and feeling hurt, not knowing why they were teasing me since I had always felt I was normal. And because of their constant um, labeling of me as a tomboy, I thought to myself that Baka nga, maybe I am indeed a lesbian. And um, it became confusing when I entered grade three. So super bata ko pa nito, grade three. I developed a crush on a classmate of the same gender. And uh, yun nga, I was so young when I really first realized that I differed from everyone else. And I felt ashamed and angry because I didn't want to be like that. I just wanted to be quote-unquote normal. And despite do, studying uh, in a Christian school and being raised in a Christian home, I did not have an intimate relationship with God. I started questioning why God would make me different. And eventually, my mom had to transfer me to an exclusive all-girls school where I felt like I could belong. But um, deep down, as in, I knew that my lifestyle was wrong. But nevertheless, at a very young age, I started dating girls. Um, I started smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, and getting drunk. And uh, ako pa yung nag-influence sa iba to do the same. I was the demonio <laughs> in the barcada. And I really thought that I was living the life, enjoying the moment in my party, getting wasted, dating around. And slowly but surely, I was really turning away from God. And... Getting deeper into that lifestyle, I began living a double life. And my relationship with my family became more and more and more distant. I was always mad at them for no reason and wanted to be with my friends and to be, to be with my girlfriend. To get drunk, get high. That was my life. And eventually I became so secret, secretive with my double life that I eventually didn't even communicate with my parents anymore. And as I lived according to my own desires, I then concluded that uh, homosexuality was a natural thing and that I was born this way. And eventually, I considered the Bible as just a book of laws that restricted people like me to be happy. And I found myself supporting the LGBT rights. In September 2009, how uh, years ago? Na ba yun? 12 Anyway, in September 2009, I began what I thought was a perfect relationship. I felt I was living happily with the best girlfriend. And as the years passed by, I began to feel empty and depressed. The one seemingly perfect relationship could no longer fill the emptiness that I had. And in February 2015, uh, my then-girlfriend and I were offered a billboard featured to promote the first LGBT campaign. I don't know if nakita nyo yun or what, but it was uh, the bench billboard, yung love, all kinds of love. So at first, I was reluctant because my family never really confirmed my homosexuality. And deep down, I felt uncom uncomfortable kasi nga hindi ako out and proud. 
However, um, it made me think that it was the chance to come out since I had been hiding for so long. And more than that, I was longing for the growing emptiness in me to be filled. I thought that doing this campaign was what I needed to fill the void in my heart. So I agreed, I agreed to do it. And however, the day before the campaign was launched, it all sank in. I felt so anxious and uh, could not believe what I was getting myself into. I got even more depressed because I thought that um, this is the only, if this is finding contentment, why do I feel it's getting worse? And running away and even committing suicide even crossed my mind. And it was during <clears throat> that moment of despair that something or someone outside of me has given me a desire that is so irresistible telling me to do what I would never have thought of on my own. And that is to, to read the Bible. I remember I only read the Bible in Christian school years ago and not wanting to read it because I was offended by what it had to say against my sexuality and my sinful lifestyle. But having the desire at that point, I was not all sure of what I was doing, but it was so strong, that desire was so strong that I couldn't resist it anymore. And I only had the Bible app in my phone at that time. And as I opened it, the verse of the day came out. And to my surprise, it made me burst into tears like never before. And the verse was Philippians 4, 6, 7. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds to anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart as you live in Christ Jesus. And that day forever changed my life. I repented to God, never really knowing what repentance was until then. I asked for mercy because I knew I deserved his punishment and begged him to save me and prayed sincerely, Lord, I, I surrender. And I was really surrendering my homosexuality. It's as if someone opened the switch for the very first time that I saw how sinful I was and have sinned against a holy and righteous God. But despite that, the creator of heaven and earth, out of his love and mercy, sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for my sins. That the greatest exchange happened on the cross. My sins was placed on Jesus and his righteousness was placed on me in order for me to be right with God. And on the third day, he rose again, defeating death that I deserved. And it was in my lowest and darkest point when God lifted me up and lit my path. I felt God's presence uh, giving me the full and complete peace he had promised on that verse. And um, when the billboard came out the next day, I went to my parents crying and telling them what had happened. And they hugged me and cried with me. And through the love they showed me, I felt God's grace. And they encouraged me to attend the Bible study. And at first, uh, I was scared. I was hesitant to go because I didn't really know what to expect in a Bible study. Thinking they would do uh, exorcism on me or something like that. I think you knew mindset ko. But my parents reassured me and came along to ensure that I would attend the Bible study. And after a while, I began attending on my own. And as I gave my life um, completely to Christ, I began experiencing the transformation and the true love that he alone brings. I enjoyed my daily reading of the Bible and became so hungry for the word and knew that his word will help me fight temptations. And I also started to pray all the time, conversing with him always. And I started to thank God for everything, even with the little things. And I saw so many, so many changes in my life, formed new convictions, and ended my relationship with my partner. And though I 
thought it was hard, uh, God secured me through it. I knew I needed to let go and surrender everything for God because He is worthy. And I needed to trust Him completely. And just want to share and add this. In October 4 of 2016, um, our photo from the billboard was used in an article that supported same-sex unions. And I knew I only had two options. And that is to, number one, to let the writer know that we both were no longer part of the LGBT community and ask to take the photo down. Or two, uh, to use that as an avenue to share to people how God transformed my life. And of course, I took the second option and wrote about his story of love and redemption. And I got a lot of encouragement from Christians all over the world. I also received very, very hurtful words from people I didn't even know and those whom I was very, very close to, friends that I, best friends since I was like kinder. And I lost a lot of close friends along the way. But despite all this, I re I remained content in having just Jesus. And with God giving me the confidence to stand up for Christ's name and rejoicing in the momentary suffering that gave not only me, but also unbelievers the hope that could be only found in Jesus Christ. And yeah, so now I know my purpose in life and that is to glorify God, worship Him, and enjoy Him forever and to share God to everyone and tell people about God's amazing love and enjoy Him and delight in His commands. So again, uh, that is my testimony. And if you have any questions, I hope that was clear. So thank you. <laughs>